My name is Dmitry Moiseev and I am an ultra endurance athlete. Over the span of 50 days, I ran a total of 2,154 kilometers with a total running time of 230 hours. I've worn 310,000 calories. Not easy. 5050 was an endurance event where I ran 50 consecutive marathons in 50 days. It was my second big challenge for us being Project 555 where I ran the length of Ireland from Mizzenhead to Malinhead in the space of five days. So that was 570 kilometers in 138 hours. It's the equivalent of 14 marathons in five days, which was physically very, very much demanding. But I also gave myself more time to train for that first challenge. I trained for 20 weeks leading into like proper, proper preparation with 50-50, it was very much different. I gave myself two weeks to prepare. It was only two months after I finished 555, so my body was still recovering. I was still sore in some places, put it lightly. So with two weeks of training, one week of recovery after those two weeks, I went straight into the 50 marathons in 50 days. With 50-50, the difference is it's over a longer period of time. You have time to switch off, which is a blessing and a course because you get to switch off, you get to real realize how bad the situation can actually be, how bad the injuries actually are. You get to comprehend that you still have like 40, 30 days ahead of you. And having done those first 10, 20 days, you realize how grueling and truly terrible they can be. So this is day one of the marathons. One thing is kind of still kind of hasn't really hit me, hasn't really kind of well, settled in. I find, like, find over the past like, few years, one thing that helps me to kind of keep pushing myself is just have the attitude of why not? Like worst case scenario, I fail. It, it is what it is. Go as close as you can to failure. You realize that a lot of the limitations, a lot of the kind of the things that you think are very much impossible are uh, streaming from the fact that you you're limiting yourself, you, you have the limited mindset based on what you think is impossible, not on what you know is impossible. Good morning, people. It is the start of 50-50, day one, Martin one. Let's go. It was dark, it was miserable, it was raining. I just stopped raining, from what I recall. It was reminiscent of 555, just me being at the start line, just with the core team, my family. All of the memories from 555 came crashing into my mind. I, like, I realized what I'm getting myself into again. And for that first like, half marathon, I was just thinking like, what am I doing? Why am I putting myself through this again? If it wasn't challenging, if it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be called a challenge. The first marathon is down. Even though Martin wasn't too bad, I'm still kind of busy, deprived and tired. My, as, as, as I predicted, like, I'm just expecting everything to go downhill from here. So I'll go home, gonna go stretch out and start getting food into me, start getting sleep into me and get ready for the Martin number two tomorrow. Let's go. So for anyone who has ever run a Martin, they know one Martin by itself <laughs> takes a lot out of you. When I got home after my first Martin, I crashed for like three hours straight. I was just asleep. Then I got up, got some food, and I crashed again for I think it was like 10 hours or something like that until the following day. That day one made me realize that I'll have another challenge in front of me, and that is getting the food in. Because to make sure that I keep on my size, I have enough energy to keep running every single day. I had to be consuming close to six to 7,000 calories daily. Quite a lot of food for anyone who knows how much food that is. When you're running, for four to five hours a day when you are you know, traveling to those locations, when you also have to sleep to recover. That leaves you with a very limited window of time where you can actually eat. And the thing with me, at least, when I was doing those challenges, I do not want to be eaten. I don't have any appetite, which means I have to be pretty much force feeding myself so six to 7,000 calories a day. That meant I had to get very creative with how I got those calories in. There were days where I was eating jars of Nutella. There were days when I was eating donuts for breakfast. And it does sound fun at the start, but when you're doing those amount of calories daily for 50 days non-stop, it gets very, very tedious and actually laboring. So far, body seems to be reacting fine. I think the key to this is gonna be very much just sleep and getting the calories in. That being said, I've only done two marathons so far, so this could be, this could, this could be the one that breaks me. Let's go, let's find out. Going into the challenge, I knew it was gonna be going all downhill from day one up until like week three. Unfortunately, I was correct. It all very much came crashing down on day three when my knee just completely gave in on me. For the first week from day three up until day seven, it was just going worse and worse and worse. So we're 25 and a half K in and we finally have a first boo-boo of the 50-50 challenge. My left knee is in bits. It doesn't feel good. Very painful. I am barely putting any weight in it and it's so sore. <laughs> 17 kilometers more to go, which is not good. This is only week one. I still have six and a weeks after that. 
how bad can it truly be? And it made me realize like, if I cannot do one week, can I, can I, can I truly do the full 50 days? Yeah, uh, it's not feeling good. What is of interest is that whether or not this is something that could be solved as I go on, or is it kind of something that's going to be getting worse and worse and worse? The knee was still giving some issues, but like compared to yesterday, it was very negligible. Like I barely noticed it. I do have to take a lot of it streams to the fact that I had the company with me today. So like yeah, I was able to just distract myself from the knee pain by like having good company. So thanks to the guys for coming out. I am currently in so much pain. <sighs> six onwards the knee has just been an issue now day nine i'm waking up and it's an issue right away straight out of bed it was like having screws screwed into your kneecap from six different directions i was not able to extend my knee so very much for marathon three four and five i was running with a bag leg keeping my left leg completely straight to avoid any flexation on the knee and i was just like flinging around and just doing all the lifting by, with the right leg i was not willing to stop and the pain going from starting off from like six on a scale of ten to close to being ten it was so bad i was very much convinced that was the end of me running altogether not just the end of the challenge but my running and perhaps even walking career altogether <laughs> Like it is, my knee that's given an enemy and it's just not getting better. I'm not sure if we're gonna do the entire 50, but we can do one more day. There were times where I was not able to walk, flexing my knee in any way, shape or form. Just put too much pain onto it. Looking back, it really tested me mentally. Just knowing in advance that it was meant to be going downhill allowed me the strength to keep going, allowed me the confidence that it was part of the plan. Compared the way I was running today was to like the night of day three of the 555 challenge. That was after like we had the miraculous recovery and I was just so angry with myself. I was just back running, running. Now I wasn't sprinting today, but we did manage our like four and a half hour marathon, which is like, it's respectable. It's respectable pace considering that my knee is still banjaxed. I'm very happy with the way it was today. If it keeps going like th like this, I'll be delighted. Small wins every day, you know? I don't want, I don't need major stuff, but just small wins every day. Baby steps, let's go. One thing I learned from 555 was how important the mind state is. Your body will fail you, get injured, you'll be weak. But if your mind goes, that's where truly the challenge begins because your body will follow the suit. If your mind is strong and it keeps pushing you, you will find a way to keep going. You will find a way to overcome. But if your mind gives in, even if your body has still not given in, it will prematurely kind of give up on you and you will prematurely quit. Day 12, yesterday, I which is day 11. I ran my fastest marathon in the past 12 days. It was around like four hours and a few minutes. So far so good. Day 15, getting it done, baby. Knees are behaving now. Let's go. So when my knee went, they just meant I could not flex my knee. There was a lot of pain involved, but at least I was able to swing around my leg using my hip. When my hip went, I could not really use my hip. My entire left leg was very much taken out of action, meaning that I had to do all of the heavy lifting with my right leg. I had to move over to the grass patch as well to reduce any stress on my knees to make sure I was not hitting the asphalt as much as I was in my first two weeks. Just knowing that eventually it should get better kept me going, but so far everything was just going downhill and it was not fun. Day 19 was truly the worst day of the challenge. I honestly wasn't sure if I will be able to do day 20 once I got to the end of it. At that stage, my knee was gone, my hip was gone. The Phoenix Park was closed, so I had to do the marathon in Herbert Park, which is very small. The max loop that I could do was a K and a half, so I had to do 30 loops to get the marathon in. And because there was a bit of a slant for like, uh, rain being carried away, you know, I was putting more strain on my left leg over my right leg. And about K37 of the marathon, my left Achilles just popped on me. I just could hear, like I just made a step and it was a huge sharp pain. Day 19, we got over it, but Jesus, do we take classes on this day? I'm really hoping I'd be able to recover overnight and push through day 20. But Jesus, today was potentially like, that's close as I'm gonna get in terms of like, questioning if I should continue or not. Day 19, you're a fucking bitch. Day 19 tested me both physically and mentally. At that stage, my knee was in shatters. It was getting slowly better, but like it was very much 
week, my hip was on and off, and on that day, my Achilles went on me. I've never been as afraid to start running in my life. And it's not because of like the pain that's gonna cause me or whatever. Like I know it's gonna be painful. Like the I can still feel it right now just in the Achilles is just very inflamed. The thing that kind of really scares me the most is that it's not failing today's one. It's that my fears might be confirmed that this is where the 50-50 stops. I'm just not really ready to, to give up yet. But like I realize like regardless of what it is, I need to start, I need to find out. Because like the longer I sit here, the situation is not going to change. I came to terms with the fact that I have to run a marathon every day. That doesn't scare me as much. It is more the fact that once I start running, the pain that's going to kick in is just going to solidify the, the, the fear that I have that I cannot continue. It very much is reminiscent of day five of 555, where like my right leg just kind of completely gave up on me. Uh, worst case scenario, I'm bringing this tape with me. And I might bring some duct tape, whichever way it is, I'm gonna finish this mark number 20. Even if I have to fucking crawl, I'm getting 20 done at least. Can I do number 21? Can I get to three weeks? I don't know. I, I'm, there's only one way to find out. As well as all of that, when I finished day 19, I chafed extremely, extremely bad as well. So I was going showering, I realized everything underneath was red from blood. It made me really much question, why am I doing this? What is the reason behind all of this? Should I even continue? The only person for whom this challenge really matters is myself. And rightfully that's the case, it always should be for those kind of challenges. You should not be doing them for somebody else, you should be doing it for your own personal reasons for yourself. I knew, looking back, day 20, just I have to keep pushing. I would be more angry at myself if I didn't at least try to do day 20. If I didn't at least try to show up and even do a few K, and then if my body fully gave in to me, I was happy to stop then. I wasn't afraid of failing. I was more afraid of not trying. I was sitting at home after like I took a shower, just Googling, can you run a marathon without an Achilles? <laughs> I found uh, a way you can tape up your uh, ankle to make sure that there's some support. So the following day, day 20, when I was back to Phoenix Park, I found like a route that was very much a straight, so it was uh, on asphalt. So I was able to uh, run on that. But running on asphalt, with weak knees and hip, put more stress on the knees and hip. I knew I was sacrificing those two in order to improve that one. And day 20, it did, it did happen. I finished the marathon. It was not the most prettiest or the fastest marathon, but it got done. It gave me the reassurance that I can keep going. Another lesson that I learned that you never know until you try something. I was scared shitless to start the marathon today. Not because I was afraid of the distance or whatever purely because of how my ankle and Achilles felt uh, yesterday from last RK. I was convinced that today potentially could be the last marathon of this 50-50 challenge. But you know what? It's not. We keep going. How do you, and I suppose more importantly, where do you find the drive to keep going? Uh, like I said, like for a lot of people who do these kind of things, it kind of goes back to their life. Big part of it is me trying to prove to myself that I can persevere, I can do hard things, regardless of what anyone tells me. A part of it comes back to what has happened in, in the past, like people doubting me and people saying that I should not be doing things because of my background, because of who I am. Looking back and all the things, even though they created that chip on my shoulder, it made me push myself harder. I'm happy it did because it created who I am. It did create that drive where I wanted to prove Firstly, it was to others that I am who I am and I'm able to do those hard things. But now this is very much just me proving to myself daily, regardless of what the challenges were, if it's running marathons, or just you know, daily challenges that I am the person that I say I am and I can persevere. a long time ago when it comes to challenges like this like with 545 and all like the only way i would pull out or stop it like if it, uh, the only way i would quit is like if i'm physically i'm being dragged out in, like on stretchers like i'm like that's I'm, i'm gonna give it my all it's a healthy and healthy I, I don't care i honestly don't care so we have day 35 today and then after that we have exactly two weeks until the end of the project Let's go. Yeah, one thing like that I'm completely blown away is like all the support they've been getting. 
throughout this entire challenge, I had had a few hundred people rowing with me. I had about 10 people who ran their first marathons with me and like multiple people who pushed their limits and who have only run maybe five or 10K before and ran like a half marathon, all of which are amazing milestones. And it was just very incredible just to see them push themselves and allow me to be part of their journey. And seeing them push themselves in a way pushed me because I realized that Project 5050, the runs weren't just about myself anymore. It was about like helping other people and pushing them to achieve their milestones. And just seeing that like firsthand, it was completely unbelievable. It makes it more real because I feel like sometimes with social media, it could be just very much just talking into your best and you don't really know who you talk to or like where the message goes to, but actually meeting people and like hearing about their journeys, how they push themselves. That is perhaps the coolest thing about this because I would be doing these challenges regardless if they're in there. For me, they're my own personal challenge. But seeing that they have an effect, a positive effect on other people, it is perhaps the most valuable thing that I have ever experienced. One thing that will always drive you is self-belief. If you don't have like belief in yourself, like regardless, like, like if you don't believe in yourself, who else will? Like, like that self-belief has to be to a point of delusion. Like you have to believe so much in yourself. Doubt will creep in it's a given like especially if you're doing like something challenging it's only natural that you start doubting yourself like can you actually do it because like if it wasn't a big goal like, it wouldn't be a challenge it wouldn't be a goal like it would be like everyone would be doing it so it's only natural you'd be kind of doubting yourself so you have to believe in yourself to the point of delusion where you think like you can move mountains because otherwise like you'll just stop at the first sign of weakness and the first sign of like discomfort well, here we are Day 38, we had for a nice run. Good morning. So once I got to London, it was quite a milestone because I was going into single digits of the marathons. It was the final countdown. The mental game was at its strongest point, but also being able to run with friends and like people who were supporting me only added to experience and made it much, much more exciting, interesting, and just much more memorable. Firstly, I got a break from the Phoenix Park Ranger who I was seeing a bit too much of, but mainly was able to be out there and running with some of my good friends. Not only was I running with them, I was running with bigger groups. I think on Saturday, when I was in London, we ran with a group close to 200 people. And having that massive crowd around you, it just provides you with so much energy. You no longer like think about, you know, like the next 5K, 10K, whatever. You're just enjoying the experience. You're just soaking in the energy, you know, you're having the conversations. It's very hard to, explain you kind of have to feel it but being in that atmosphere it's no longer about running it's just being there and like without even realizing i think on, on that day i ran 50k not a marathon and i accidentally got myself a pb in 50k that's how much energy you get from those big groups so at the saturday challenge i looked over all of my training camps for 505 and all of my performance during the 505 i predicted that for the first three weeks i'll be very much going downhill because i have not used to the volume and the reason for three weeks is because it usually takes your body about three weeks to get used to a specific stimulus i was expecting for the first 24 or so days for things to be going downhill and slowly to start get better and better and better. The going downhill prediction was correct, but it wasn't up until maybe until day 40 onwards where things started to improve slowly. And then by the time I got to day 40, by the time I got to London, that was very much where I was at the peak performance. When I got to London, obviously having my friends around me, having those big crowds around me, supporting me and just like pushing me to go forward was an immense kind of help. If somebody told me on day like 19, but my Achilles completely went to me, which is, like, when you think about it, isn't that far back around day 40, no. If somebody told me day 19 that when my Achilles went, when my knee went, when my hip went, that a few days down the line, I'd be doing 320 splits and be running in like my fast marathons again. Great to hear that, but like I would not believe you, you know? And it just goes back to, you know, trust the process, trust that it's gonna be all fine. Even if not, the hope itself will carry you pretty, pretty far by itself. Only 85 kilometers left in the challenge. Let's go! Day 49, Martin 49. Only what, like 60 kilometers left to go in the challenge? Let's go! I don't know what's gonna happen today. The, big, the biggest difference is like when I was going out on day one, I knew it was gonna be dark cold and I'd be there by myself. And like I was fine with that. Like I knew I was signing off for a board. But this one is just like going out. I know there'll be people that will support me and like 
it's just much better atmosphere and mood and like I'm almost I'm looking forward to that part like you know like running marathons and like finishing the project at school but like I just didn't like starting off the project I didn't expect I'll be getting as much support as I did and I'm just very thankful for that kind of stuff yeah. well, I've got to run away I've got to Get away, jeez, I've been here. <laughs> Some very low moments during the 50-50 and I felt very, very sore and bad. But I just knew how much worse it could be for a 555. So like day four and five, my knee felt the, the worst it ever did. I thought it was the end of me running altogether. To compete, like just like fatigue, the leg completely given up on me day five during the 555. You remember like when I was sitting there, like I was like, I, like it could be like that, you know, like I, I could be completely like entire body just given up on me so it's like this is only the knee you know it's i have another one left i didn't realize how bad i was during the 555 until i kind of i looked <laughs> i looked back but hey we, we, we cut it down anyway day 50 baby let's go <laughs> to be honest like and now I, I just realized how close the finish is so like we're almost there yeah Last one, yeah, let's go. We have only two laps left and then a nice leisurely 4k to celebrate. Let's go! The last day was truly, truly surreal. As I said, when the challenge started off, I was not expecting to have the support that I got. The good thing that happened on the day, my body worked. <laughs> that, that was a good point. I was running pain-free. That was actually the first day that I ran without any of the knee braces or ankle support uh, since like week one. The energy again of people just was carrying me so much. I'm gonna be feeling great. We have one kilometer left in this challenge. We are be hitting the, we'll be hitting the marathon mark by the time we get to the monument. And then we're doing a lap to celebrate to Little Lemon. Last 4K, you know, just enjoying the bus, enjoying the company. Happy to be done. Let's get it done. Let's, let's, let's finish the job. The last 5k, when I was running from Phoenix Park to the Little Lemon store, it was just so cool. Like, just run through this town with all those people, knowing that they are there for me to enjoy the experience, to celebrate. It was just truly, truly incredible. I'm so happy, man. Fifty-fifty was a test for me. I wanted to see how much more I can push myself. Can I expand myself to a long, longer term challenges? How my body would react to them? How I can recover and keep myself mentally in the game? How I can push myself physically? But also, as I said, it was a test for the next challenges that I want to be doing. Because it is very easy to romanticize a challenge uh, when you don't understand what's involved. But going through 555, going through 50-50, made me realize and experience things and see them firsthand. That understanding, that appreciation gives you a better insight of firstly what you're capable of, but also like what the bigger challenges involve. And having done the, those two challenges now, I do have my eyes set on one more challenge, one, one very big challenge. I can say like that much that as much of a challenge and test 50-50 was, it was a training block for that challenge. But as I said before, and it still applies, Jumps are done. <laughs>